Hello and welcome to another episode of Invad Entry. My name is James Taylor and we are continuing Advent 2021 looking at some fun Python libraries. Uh, we've looked at requests, we've looked at Beautiful Soup, we've looked at It's Dangerous and we have looked at one other one whose name I uh, uh, regret. Anyway, today we're looking at a library called SimPy. SimPy is a library which uh, I, I really like. It, on my scale of, of would I use it in an industrial or engineering environment, probably not. It's more of a scientific library. It's not as big as something like NumPy or SciPy, uh, but it has its uses if you're a mathematician. And I think it goes under the radar a bit. I've looked at how it works under the hood, and uh, I think that explains why it has a little bit of bloat to it. So I think things like NumPy and SciPy are way too big to do a, a five minute, 10 minute video on. But SimPy is, again, way too big. If you actually look at its um, documentation, it documentation just goes on. It does all of these type of mathematical things. There is plenty of space to do an entire Advent series just on SimPy. But unfortunately, I don't think my math is good enough to talk about holonomic numbers or or <laughs> even some, even my mathematics of integrals is, is a bit dodgy at times. So what is SimPy? It is for symbolic calculations. Uh, don't worry about what I'm importing up here. I'm just going to import a whole bunch of stuff. And I've started the wrong kernel. So I'm just going to change my kernel to the right kernel. And run that again. And it'll import nicely. Um, it isn't the fastest thing in the world. I think if you're going to use it, um, if you're doing one-off calculations, it's fantastic. If you try to do the math, it's fantastic. Do more complex things is a bit weird. So the first thing we want to do, though, is we want to define some um, 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 symbols. Okay? And symbols are like x, y equals um, symbols x, uh, x, y. So you just basically make a list of your symbols you're going to use in your in your maths, okay? And then I can do an equation so I can say um, my, my equation equals uh, 4 times x. You have to write this. You can't, you can't say 4x uh, if you're a mathematician. Plus 9 times y plus y uh, squared. Okay, and then what you can do is you can then print it out, and what you get is this really nice. And notice it might actually reorder your your system for you. Uh, in fact, I'm going to change this to um, uh, x y, uh, um, there's a reason for that. Oh, what was my reason? Sorry, x times y. And you start ending up with, with things like this. It may, perhaps you don't have a y at all. Perhaps you can take the y out. And then we're going to 4 times squared. And you end up with your maths coming out again. It's coming out you know, nicely. It's reordered my things so it looks correct. You can then start to factorise it. So you can start doing something called uh, expand and simplify to try and come out with factors. There's a factorise function. There's an integrate function. There's a differentiate function. So you can actually then start doing quite the cool things with this. Um, what I really like about it, though, was I was trying to do some maths about the the speed of a wave in, um, uh, in, in going down a cable, a dielectric speed of a wave. And the calculation of that is really nasty. So I'm just going to paste it in here. So what it is, it requires the dielectric velocity is basically the speed of light divided by the square root of mu, two, mu t times epsilon r. What I really like about this is it already has probed in what those Greek symbols are. And if you do an underscore, when I actually run this and then print off this equation, you end up with, oh, nope, just want the equation. You end up with a really nice printed um, version of what that is. So you can look at it, you can then stick that in your document, you can stick that in your, you know, your scientific write-up, whatever. It'll even print latex, it'll produce latex output if you really want to. So I can then start manipulating this. It's always saying I can do these mathematicals and some mathematicals. But if I go back to my first equation, I can then do eq.subs and I can say I want to substitute x for 4 and it will give me the answer to that so it basically has substituted 4 into the place of x in that equation and again I can go through this I can substitute the speed of light I can substitute these things if I go back to this equation one of the things I can do is I can substitute at the speed of light which is an inbuilt variable um, dot subs speed of light in now I, I, I speed of light it, it, it itself is actually interesting because I, what do I care about? Do I care about it in meters per second? Do I care about it in feet per hour? And what I can do is I can do dot convert to meter per second, which I had imported at the top. 
And when I do that, immediately it started trying to resolve this and it's added my units in. And one of the, one of the things which have really annoys me when people do maths is that they drop the units and therefore when they try to get the end, they try to put the units back in. Uh, there was a really big thing on the internet um, for amongst geeks about, uh, I think it was Verizon or one of the telephone companies, the guy behind XKC had a big argument with them about the fact that they dropped the units. They charged him something per uh, 0.1 cents per, per megabyte or gigabyte or whatever. And then they actually charged him in cents. Like they multiplied it by a factor of 10 or a factor of 100 or something because they'd lost their unit. So this is now in meters per second. I could change that to per hour or whatever and it will come out and it will keep those units. So when it gets to the end, if the units cancel, the units resolve, my units are correct at the end when I do my maths. Uh, the next thing we can do, actually, which is really cool, is we can start to do um, other maths puzzles on it. And, and this is, so here's a maths puzzle I was doing the other day. Um, it's a really simple maths puzzle. It was my daughter's homework. And I, I really struggled with this because I could solve it very quickly, but I couldn't work out how she could solve it with her maths. Because uh, I would, at this point, the question is, I've got a rectangle. It's got two sides um, where one side, B, is four more than the other side and the total area is 96. Um, and in my head, what I immediately did was I sort of, well, I said, well, this then is a square um, where where actually it's not A times B. It's A times A plus A times 4. That That is immediately how I went to solving that in my head. Okay? Um, and... Uh, I, I could then see this would go into a quadratic equation and I could just solve the quadratic equation out, um, which apparently is frowned upon when you're a, uh, a nine-year-old. Because uh, you don't really do that until you're in secondary school. Um, so <laughs> what you do is we can write an equation. I'm just loading up so I get it right first time. Uh, I'm going to make some new symbols. I'm going to make, um, I'm going to break that down slowly. So I'm going to make A and B equal to symbols A a and B. Okay, so now I've got A and B in scope. So I can say my equation is equal to A times B. Okay, but we also said that that B is really um, A plus 4. So what I can now do is say equation or, or equation dot subs. I want to substitute B with A plus 4. And it, it, it's already pre factorized it for me. So oh, it hasn't factorized it. says A is equal to A times 4. Um, but that's not quite true either. I actually want to actually get to the answer. So what we can now do is we can actually make another equation where we say output the 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 actual solution is equal to an equation. I can't use the equal sign because that's a Python thing. But I can say 96 on one side is equal to that equation. And if I print the solution off it tells me that's that's the combination. Um, I know that I actually don't want to do that to uh, straight off the bat. What I actually want to do is I actually want to expand. So if I expand the equation, hold on, I've done this twice. Uh, If I expand that with the substitution in, I get my initial point. So if I now expand expand the uh, solution, it comes out 96 equals that. We're very nearly in the quadratic form. In my head, what I would do is I minus 96 on both sides, so 0 equals a squared plus 4 squared, 4a2. Um, and then what, what we would then do is resolve that as a quadratic equation because you'd end up, that, that would actually factorise out into uh, a plus 12 and minus 8. Um, and you get your solution. But we don't even have to do that. What we can now do, um, ooh, if I actually write with my fingers in the right place, we can do solve set solution, and it will drop out those answers. It drops out the an uh, that A is either minus 12 or 8. Well, we know because it's a physical question, we know that because it's a, a rectangle, it can't be minus 12, therefore the answer has to be 8. Um, and the answer to this problem is is four and eight centimetres, or eight and twelve centimetres, so eight because A is eight, and then B will be twelve, eight plus four, um, as per the visual problem. So that's, that's SimPy. It, it's a beautiful thing. It allows you to take uh, mathematical problems. If you've got an equation, if you're doing any form of engineering, you can then leave all the, the variables in right to the end and just resolve them at the end. 
It's really nice if you're handling anything with pi because you can just use pi as a placeholder, leave it in at the end and it will come out as four pi rather than having to work it out and getting loads of floating point error throughout your maths. Um, it handles um, um, non-rational numbers really nicely, a bit like the fraction fractional uh, part of Python itself. So if you have a thing where you want to do proper maths and you don't want to be limited by the computational value itself, i.e. You know, resolving all these, these, these long floating point numbers, it's really cool. As I say, it does a lot more. It can do things like tell you if a point is in the middle of a polygon or the shape of a polygon. There's loads of geometry in here. Uh, it can do number theory. It's got a cryptography section. It's not for use. Don't use the cryptography section. Um, but it has loads of things like matrices, things, plotting, physics, sets, things like that. Um, and it is it is absolutely amazing um, um, library. I think it's I think it's something that people don't necessarily know about unless you are a, like a, a mathematician. I think things like NumPy and SymPy are known about more because they're more about dealing large amounts of data. Uh, but this is more about dealing with formulas and equations. Um, I've absolutely loved doing some equations in this uh, in the past few months. I've been doing a lot of radio work, a lot of antenna design, uh, and it's allowed me to model something and then put in some values or solve the values coming out. So I can work out antenna sizes by working out the formula for like wavelengths and things and say, well, how long is, is, is it at the end? It just drops out and I can tinker with those those substitutions and get get the, the designs I want out. So I absolutely love Sim SimPy. Um, not everyone's cup of tea. Not Most programmers don't care about this stuff, if I'm honest with you. It is more of a hobbyist type function. I think what's interesting about it is that it may have uses where you want to allow people to put in formulas for a thing for you to get an answer because I think you can do trusted input in it quite interestingly. You can control it, sort of sandboxes the calculations. I believe under the hood it's using an eval, it's actually doing a code generation for you uh, to resolve some of those answers out efficiently, um, which is a little bit naughty, but I think it's doing it in a way where the sandboxing is possible. I don't think it allows you to just write Python. Uh, so there are some interesting applications you, we could use this for. Um, it is a little bit bloated. I say if you only wanted to do this this very basic set of of things, you are importing quite a large library into your into your containers or whatever deployment system you're using. Uh, but it's certainly not as bad as NumPy or something like that. Um, and the probability is if you're using this, you're probably using NumPy anyway, uh, which is which is a big import or pandas or something like that. Um, so that's it. Tomorrow we're going to look at another library. Um, and again, the day after the day after, we're going to do 24 libraries in 24 days. So if you're enjoying these and you're enjoying seeing different people using Python, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and feel free to leave me a comment below because it helps feed the algorithm and, you know, we're all about feeding the algorithm around here. All right, that's it for me, and I will see you all tomorrow.